Well, our next guest on the show today has quickly become an old hand at Quality Digest Live. Kelly Graves is among our most popular columnists, and I think for good reason. He writes about the challenges of performance excellence and quality improvement from the human side of the equation. His latest article, which you can see right there, which is the subtly named employee evaluations are a waste of time and money. Kelly's always very subtle. So. Uh, appeared in Quality Digest Daily, as you can see right there, earlier this month. Now, Kelly uses his training in psychology to help executives better lead their people and thereby achieve better outcomes for their organizations and everyone within it. He's the CEO of Internal Business Solutions, a consultancy that specializes in these very issues. So, Kelly, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back. How Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, how are you? I've been doing great. Good, good. Well, let's get right down to it. Okay, so <laughs> formal employee evaluations are a waste of time and money, right. as you say. Well. So what's, what's a better way of doing it? I mean, you have to give feedback. You have to support your employees and coach them and train them. So how do you do it better? Okay, well, let me take one step back real quick. If we dissect the word employee evaluation. First, evaluation, when you look that up and define it, it means judgment. Mm -hmm. So right there, you've already lost the game. I'm judging you. Mm -hmm. Second thing is it's employee judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's one way. That's an incompetent model. It's something that we've brought over since the 1920s, 30s and 40s, okay? So really a better way of doing that is to say, how can we, if you're my manager, how can we improve? Now that's a dialogue, okay? Right, right. So um, what I've termed my model is management and employee development and improving plans or systems. Mm -hmm. That's because if an employee, if you're my boss and I'm the employee, if you're trying to help me improve, that's part of your job is to train, to coach, um, and it can't be done once a year. It needs to be done on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And the best way that I've found to do that is to open up a dialogue and say, okay, today we're gonna sit down and talk about the things that you're doing well and things that you're doing not, but also, as my boss, what am I doing well mm -hmm. and what, what am I doing to improve on? Right. Okay, so now, um, now we have a dialogue instead of the employee saying, you know what, you're my boss, I have to rely on you for my mortgage, for my, you know, for my family, whatever you say, whether I like it or not, yes sir, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, that's not development, okay? Well, you know, I remember, I mean, I, when I first began to work, you know, two, three decades ago, I mean, mm -hmm. I, the employee review was, was so formalized. I mean, it literally was on my anniversary every year for yes. like the first several years of my employment. Mm -hmm. and. I, you know, to be honest, I kind of look forward to it, maybe because I was a great employee, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, right. I look forward to getting the feedback. I mean, it was like, I, it, it wasn't done in real time. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, the my boss like seemed to like store it up and she, would, she wouldn't tell me when it was happening, mm -hmm. but like maybe eight months later, I'd find out I did something that wasn't very good and I should have been changing it. So obviously that's a problem, but again, what's the better way of doing it rather than that annual thing? I mean, you do it the, in real time, you do it as it's happening, I mean. It's best to do it in time. Yeah. In fact, when I work with companies, when we first hire an employee, I say, what we're gonna do in the first week is, at the end of that first week is, what are we doing well, what are we not, how do I need to manage you differently, right. what precisely do you need to do? So now, and then at the two week, and then 30 days, 60 day, 90 day. So the person gets used to constant feedback, but also the manager gets used to constant feedback because it's really a team thing. If it was like a, a coach saying, okay, at the end of the year, I'm going to tell you what we need to do to win games, he wouldn't be a coach for very long, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it just, and so what we want to do is like right now, instead of the employee evaluation being done for me, you know, and on July 15th, let's do it now. Let's find out what I need to improve on and how you're going to help me. And then let's follow up in 30 days. What are the two or three things that you and I choose to focus on and say, okay, Kelly, you need to improve in this area, this area, and this area. What are you gonna do as the employee? You're gonna do much of the heavy lifting. But conversely, what are, what is my manager gonna do to help me succeed in that? Um, that's guidance, that's maybe mentoring. And those things can be done two minutes in the hallway. They can be done three minutes here, four minutes there. So it's not this official test. It's this dialogue that we have back and forth. And as a result of that, we have more trust, we have more communication, and we, kit, we catch things 10 times quicker. Now, when you multiply that times a group of people, let's say a small organization of 50, you can see where we can shift an organization very quickly. How does this, 
I mean, I, I like the idea. I think a yes. lot of people would, would like this idea, probably even the managers. Right. But from an HR perspective, they're going, okay, now legally, we've got to keep track of this, that, and the other, because what happens if we want to fire an employee because they're not performing, or, or what about raises, or what about you know, equity between mm -hmm. you know, different, how do you, when you don't have something kind of rooted in a formal mm -hmm. procedure, how do you keep, keep legally and, and HR folks happy? This is even more appropriate for HR. Again, to go back in history, what evaluations have really done is become a legal document so we can document people out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all it's become, really. Yeah. Um, it, under the guise of, let's develop our people. It doesn't develop our people. It saves our hind end, okay? So what we wanna do is when you have, it's still the same form, okay? We still have the questions, but we, we approach it differently. It's more of an us thing. So now, with the clients that I use this with, if something, if we do have to terminate John Smith, we've already worked with John Smith multiple times. We've shown on, you know, November 15th and, you know, these different dates that we sat down and we did this kind of training, we did this kind of coaching, it's documented all the way through. So if the time comes when we really do have to terminate John Smith, we still have all the documentation. In fact, we have better documentation. What's even better than that is, as we're going through this process, John Smith knows I'm, I'm missing the marks. Uh, they're working with me, they're guiding me, they're coaching me, and eight times out of 10, about 78% of the time, that person will quit before they get terminated, which reduces our liability 100%. Right. Okay, so it's, it's the style in which I put this together that is more you and me working together as a team, which, most companies spout teamwork, not teamwork. It, it, it's teamwork, but with the old style. Okay, right. so this is a whole different way of approaching us and how we can really develop each other. Well, let me ask you about ego. I mean, yeah. because managers, you know, what you're talking about is really a 360 degree review mm -hmm. where, that, that the employees mm -hmm. can also help the manager manage right. better and lead better. Mm -hmm. But managers have ego. I mean, a lot of managers have a lot of ego. And how yes. do you get over that? I mean, a manager might say, ah, come on, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a rookie or you're, you're somebody lower in the organization. Well, how, why are you telling me what I should be doing? Okay. I mean, how do you impart to the manager the importance of getting over the ego and accepting the information? That's where it starts from the top down. Ego has no place in business, just like ego has no place on the football field. Do you want to win the Super Bowl or do you want to score touchdowns? Right, right. You know, that's where you have to sacrifice for the team. And if we have a, a manager with undue ego, then we have a manager that needs his professional development from the CEO or the executive. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Kelly Graves, thanks for joining us again. As always, Kelly, of course, as I mentioned, is one of our most popular columnists. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to check out Kelly's articles, you got about a do half a dozen with us now, yeah, or more. Yeah, every month. Um, yeah, every month for the last, most of this year. So check out uh, on our search bar, right, uh, content by Kelly Graves. Uh, and you can see all of Kelly's articles right on there. And Kelly, we'll look forward to more, more stuff from you Looking in the, the coming to. months and back on the show. Thanks, man. Coming up as well. All right, we're going to move on now to our...